Half time at Wembley Stadium and it is still all level as Manchester City take on Tottenham Hotspur in the League Cup final. Here to get into the first 45 minutes is Mr Andy Morrison and Sean Goethe. My name is Cal Spellman. Thank you for coming back to us. Uh, Sean, what is your assessment of that first half? Well, I think we had everything just apart from the, the goal or goals that we need. Uh, City dominating um, tactically. I, I see what City's doing. Uh, certainly when Tottenham's had the ball and goal kicks or deep in the half, they've used Gundogan and, and Fernandinho to, to, to be high so that they're, they're, they're basically using six players to, to sort of press and saying you're going to go long. And whenever Tottenham's gone long, City's won the ball and then it, then won the second ball and then regained possession. So Tottenham's really not really had a, a real rhythm. And that's, that's tactically because City's been brilliant. Yeah, we seem to, as we seem to do against many teams, control possession a lot of the time spent in Tottenham's half. Would you say, Andy, I mean, unfortunately not to come away with at least a goal for show for it, given the dominance there in those 45 minutes, it was quite frightening. Yeah, listen, everything we wanted from the first half, everything we spoke about before the game and hoped for, come to fruition yeah. I mean chance after chance total domination um, but that without that goal and um, and that's always the worry you know what I, I said before the game we'll get four or five chances it's really important we take a couple of them mm. we haven't yet you know once we break through the structure of the game will totally change they'll be happy going in at half time they'll They'll be, they'll definitely be out of breath when they're in there, you know, because um, they've had, a, you know, they've had a chasing for 45 minutes and it is tough. But while it's still at nil nil, they're still very dangerous. We'll come to maybe a couple of there, the, the odd break, but as you say there, Andy, we had quite a few chances. It almost looked like two almost goal line clearances. There was, um, I think, one that it looked like a Hugo Lloris save. It was the Alderweireld actually that actually um, kind of managed to get his body in front of it. We had there at the end an unbelievable um, shot from Cancelo. There was a couple of maybe half chances. Do you think, Sean, though, we could have been, using Andy's word, a bit more clinical with a few of the chances that we'd created? Yeah, I'd like to think so. I think um, we're seeing we're seeing Sterling have some of these opportunities. Um, again, I think there was one in particular. It was a cross that comes to him, and he continues running. He doesn't reach the ball. And my 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 instinctive thought was, if if you sort of throw your body, you get another yard. Uh, or, on, you know, yard in terms of distance. And I think he would have made contact with the ball. Now, from there, it's whether or not the contact hits the target. But I think if he gets contact, he potentially could score because mm. he was only the best part of three or four yards out. So yep. uh, that, that situation there was, was odd that he... He, he stretched, but didn't didn't throw his body at it. But again, he's he's had a couple opportunities. Uh, Mares coming in on his left foot has worked. Lloris uh, has been really impressive. Cancelo coming in, that that last shot we saw from Cancelo, you know, showing up in that the number ten position. I think that will be the, the, the interesting area in terms of second half, of, of finding him in those sort of areas uh, a bit more. But again, as Andy said, I think it's been absolutely brilliant. We're, we're just needing that goal because I think mm -hmm. the game then really opens up. Sadly, I was wrong in my prediction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, But yeah, sorry, Andy. The, I, no, I was going to say kind of from, from there, actually, Sean, you know, we, we've been doing that. And the other thing we'd, you'd both alluded to was how important it would be to stop the counter, which would mean maybe smothering in midfield. We saw Laporte pick up a yellow card there, kind of doing just what was needed. Is there a cause for concern? Because they, they are breaking quickly in something that we'll definitely have to keep aware of in the second half, Andy. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to keep up. We'll, you know, we'll have to be ready for that. But it's been such a dominant 45 mm -hmm. minutes, more than what I ever expected at the start of the game. Wow, I yeah. mean, we have been, the press has been right, and um, we've moved the ball quickly, we've um, we've created opportunities, we've opened them up, everything is there. The performance has been brilliant, mm. um, and they've not hurt us, they've not looked like they've got in behind us. There's not, whether they've had a shot on goal, I'm not sure. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So, um, we managed to stop anything at source early on, um, and I, I think they've been really poor. You know, they've absolutely brought nothing to the table whatsoever mm. for 45 minutes. But at nil-nil, they'll see it as a job done. But it's, again, it's it's down to our finishing and, and, and us making sure that we take the chance. When the next one comes, we must take it. And, and and off that then, Sean, so taking that next chance when it comes along, what else do you think we maybe be looking to to do in the in the second half to, to, to break that deadlock? 
Yeah, I think well, we haven't seen we haven't seen Gundogan. Normally, we see Gundogan make you know these runs in between the centre back and the full back, and we haven't seen him sort of ghost in there. And that's because there's been this you know players moving in, moving out. Who's who's the the, the centre forward, um, and then the, the back in midfield. And this is where I see someone like Cancelo uh, again because he's right footed playing left back. I could see him appearing in those areas where mm -hmm. he's he's in those areas either to be having shots or sliding players in five yards outside the 18 yard box. So I, I find that to be an interesting area that we can capitalize on against the second half. And for you, Andy, I mean, we can we can maybe, you know, nod our heads over to the bench of a couple of kind of defensive uh, subs on there as well if we need them. But of course, can't not look past Jesus Aguero. Um, we've got Ferran Torres on there. Um, would you be maybe looking to them uh, possibly if we want to rest Kevin De Bruyne as well? We spoke about obviously coming back from a slight knock. Would you maybe look into them to maybe bring us some energy or maybe get that all important goal? Well, the, the manager will, will obviously know now where, where he is in, in, in relation to his fitness. Um, and they might have had a pre-plan. It might be an hour. I mean, Bernardo Silva has been in the form of his life. So, you know, again, we'll be bringing in mm. a player, Aguero. Why not, you know, <laughs> at a moment like this to come on and, and do something? Because I just feel with his movement, his, his, his ability to sniff out a chance, you know, with the, the dominance we've had and the five or six good balls we've had in the box, you can't help but think that he would be on the end of one of them. So, you know, really positive when you look at the bench, the, the opportunities we've got to change the shape of the team. But, you know, Pep will be saying, listen, just keep doing what we're doing. We cannot keep creating these chances as the game goes on and they tire. Mm. Um, and it's not so much the legs, it's the foot, it's the brain with against City. You cannot switch off and one person switches off, you know, and he'll be, he'll be encouraging him to do the same because, like I said, I've been so impressed with him that half. I mean, you could see it as well, couldn't you? Sergio Aguero coming on to score the winner. It would be the stuff of dreams. Um, I've just been hearing as well, we've of course had our presenter, Rabbi, down there with Sean Wright Phillips at Wembley. Gareth Bale um, is out on the pitch warming up at half time. So, if they're looking to introduce him, Sean, that probably changes things for Tottenham and says that probably want to kind of can't do much worse, I guess, than that first half. So they are maybe looking to, to come at us, and that's where we'll have to kind of show our maturity, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, it, yes, if Gareth Bale was to come on, again, his quality, his experience, but I think from City's point of view, City's dictated the game, dictated the pace, the tempo, um, and City will continue as they'll just look to put away one of their chances because then it really changes the game. Um, they would throw more bodies forward and therefore City can, can really open them up. So again, for the neutral, it'll be exciting if Gareth come on because he's, he's a quality player. Mm -hmm. um, we know what he brings in terms of his quality. But again, the way City play and operate in Pep, you know, is about having the ball and, and Gareth could be on the field, but if his team hasn't got the ball... <laughs> He can't do anything. He can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, listen, uh, slight pause from us looking at the first half. Uh, I'm bringing it back to you, beautiful people. So as you know now, every show, and we're not really here, we are giving one lucky fan the chance to win a Manchester City home shirt. We'll send it wherever in the world. All we're asking you to do is send us how you're watching the game. Um, we've got some brilliant people send them in on WNRH. Also people getting in touch who can't quite make the game as well, but say they're supporting from some brilliant places this week. Um, we had Sarah Motley on Twitter to say, I'm not able to watch the game today because I'm playing at the same time and she sent a picture of her with her fellow girls team um, says I'm the one in the red over on the far right hand side so from us all at Man City we are sending all the luck to you in Cincinnati uh, for the game that you're playing girls good luck um, we had Thomas Halpin who's got in touch to say we're watching from a very sunny island which as we know is an absolute rarity of, uh, if you are from over an island my granddad's from there and it's safe to say it rains most of the time so thought that was worth a special shout out possibly in contention to win that shirt um, and we all also had as well um, a, a lovely picture sent here of somebody who's actually at Wembley. Um, you can see him there uh, enjoying the sunshine, shades on, looking very, very fresh. The Bertiful South on Twitter. Thank you for sending us those. Just a quick moment actually on that because, I mean, he's, he's outside Wembley, not jealous at all, um, the Bertiful South on Twitter. Andy, hearing the fans, it has just brought an extra something to the game, hasn't it? Yes, it certainly, you know, we've seen a lot of games here where, you know, with the stadiums being empty and, and it, it feels like a practice match, you know, and the quicker we get the fans back in and it's a start. But, you know, I, I expect it to move pretty quickly, you know, over the next, hopefully before the end of the season, we start to see, we start to see, you know, our, our own place full um, or at least, you know, 5,000 be able to come into a game before the end of the season. And it's a start. 
and it, and it's encouraging. It really is. Encouraging is a great word for it. And looking absolutely magnificent as well, it has to be said. There's a little old mate there enjoying a little paper at halftime. Uh, and we had a final one on Twitter from Paul Swampy Marsh, who says, cheering Man City from the top of Mount Snowden. So as far as setups go, being the top of a mountain isn't bad. Fingers crossed we'll be a top of the League Cup mountain four years on the row, come full-time at Wembley Stadium. Um, the players, I think, will be looking to come out in just a second. So, so final word from you, Sean. Um, as, as we look to kind of secure this all-important ground, what do you think will be the most important thing that City have to do? Well, I think the things I'm thinking about right now is Laporte has a yellow card, so I think he's got to be careful Interesting. in terms of, you know, if they get opportunity to counterattack. Uh, other than that, I, I think it's about having the patience, keeping the tempo the way it is, and again, the quality on that field will create chances and opportunity, and it's just a case of who takes that opportunity. Uh, I'm pretty sure that one of the boys will be taking it. We, we've got your predictions, um, but I mean, it, it could be a lot of goals in the second half, we don't know, but I will just going to throw out to you, if, if City were to score, and we've seen, I think, you know, a selection of Foden, Sterling, Mares, De Bruyne's even had a free kick, all have shots on target. Who are the players that, uh, who would you put one player who's going to score the next goal for City? Who can you see it being short? When I say Phil, you say Foden. Phil, Foden. Foden. <laughs> uh, what about you, Andy? Um, just try and think outside the box. You know, I'm going to go for, uh, it'd be nice to see him from one of, one of these set plays. Yeah. Um, Diaz and, or a Laporte to get on the end of one of them. Oh, a Diaz header would be lovely. He's been threatening as well, hasn't he? Yeah. Yes. He really has. Um, well, listen, remember, at, we're not really here. We're going to be back with you at full time. Fingers crossed, talking about a League Cup uh, victory. Maybe a Sergio Aguero goal. Who knows? Um, but Andy Morrison and Sean will be with me to get in with all the action. Uh, and if you're still sitting there going, Do you know what? I actually think I could top some of the uh, tweets I've read out there of where I'm watching the game or a picture of the setup. Then you know what to do. Hashtag WNRH. Send your picture with a few words of a tweet uh, and at the end of the show we're going to be revealing our winner who will get sent this a Manchester City home shirt and we're going to be doing this uh, every We're Not Really Here show till the end of the season and then after that of course we can have a little look forward to that all important game at PSG but before that 45 minutes to go at Wembley remember this will go past full time if it stays at 0-0 but something's telling me there will be plenty of goals fingers crossed from our boys in blue until then though get yourself a brew and we'll see you at full time